A very good morning. It's just gone six o'clock. I'm Jeremy Kyle. And I'm Nicola Thorpe. Welcome to Talk Today. On TV, on radio, and on your smartphone, this is Talk TV. Continue to see wet and windy weather, courtesy of areas of low pressure coming in off the Atlantic over the next few days. But as you can see, as we head into the weekend, high pressure starts to build from the south. So then we'll start to see more of a north-south divide with the conditions. And southern areas will fare best with the driest and brightest conditions as we head into the weekend and it becomes a little bit warmer. Before then, uh, around average temperatures and the unsettled theme continues. Uh, for Tuesday morning, it will be a very wet start across Scotland, northern and uh, western parts of England and West. Wales showers elsewhere. It will be windy everywhere as well, particularly around western coast of Wales and the south coast of England. There is a warning for the rain across southern and eastern Scotland for the whole day as the rain there persists for much of the day. That could cause some localised flooding elsewhere. It will be a case of sunshine and showers. Then into Wednesday, starting off fine and bright for many areas, but quickly from the west it will turn cloudier, wetter and windier and that rain will be moving its way eastwards through the day. So for many areas on Wednesday afternoon it is looking rather wet and blustery as well with around average temperatures for the time of year. Times Radio sponsors Talk TV Weather. Look, I'm getting ready for my new primetime show on Talk TV and Radio, 7 o'clock Saturday night, James Whale Unleash. I don't need you coming in here, following me around with a car. I'm so sorry about this. Saturdays at 7 on Talk TV. And a very good morning to you. It's just coming up to two minutes past five o'clock. It's Tuesday, the 9th of April, and this is your early breakfast show with me, James Max, here on Talk, where we're on TV, on DAB, and on the smart speaker. We're live from the news building here in London. So, coming up between now and six. Later, we get a personal finance update from Myron Jobson from Interactive Investor. We'll find out what the cheapest supermarket is. What are the options for getting a fixed rate mortgage? And if you're a renter, how much will your rent go up in the next year or two? Also, you can review the papers as ever. And talking to the papers, there's a fabulous story in there about the music that's been banned. We'll find out what a little bit later. But this morning, it's clear that we need more money for public services to fix the NHS. But where should it come from? Labour is saying that they want to close tax loopholes. Yet with a record number of town hall staff on six-figure salaries. Should we be looking for savings? How should the government raise more money? So, very good morning to you. Hope you're well this Tuesday morning. And I want your help. I want to find out from you where we should get more money from. We're constantly told that we've got potholes and the NHS and defence spending and social care... Uh, to name but a few. There are a range of issues that, of course, are impacting the nation's finances. We know that the economy needs to grow or should grow in order to pay for these things. But we also know that there is an ideological battle underway at the moment. That ideological battle means that you are being targeted with your pocket. The money that you pay over in tax, nationally through... Uh, income tax, inheritance tax, national insurance, VAT, insurance tax, travel tax, sin tax, and then, of course, locally through council tax. And we also know that there's an ideological battle when it comes to dealing with the likes of second homes and whether they should uh, pay more tax. Double council tax being mooted here, there and everywhere. Tax, 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 and maybe some more tax. But how do you think the government should raise more money? 
Give me a call. It's 0344 499 1000. Who should pay more? How should they get more money in? Should they be closing loopholes? What would you suggest when it comes to the government raising more money? Now, I throw a couple of things uh, into the mix. The front page of today's Times newspaper, Labour set to close non-DOM loopholes. So, we know that Jeremy Hunt, the Chancellor, made this announcement, which kind of spooked Labour. Why? Because it was one of their big planks. As to, I mean, they spent the money 28 times, but they were going to raise this money through closing the non-DOM loophole. But then Labour have identified within that legislation and said, no, 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 we're going to change some of the rules that even the Conservatives have set. We don't like the idea of people being able to set up trusts or to delay. We're going to go in now. We'll get all these hundreds of millions of pounds. No, they won't. But anyway, that's what they say they're going to do. It, to my mind, it's, uh, it's a desperate act uh, that is a disincentive to living in the UK. Why? Because if you've got a lot of money, you're going to go elsewhere. I'm well aware that we shouldn't have tax loopholes and that people should be paying their fair share. But I'm also well aware that if you have somebody who's extremely wealthy and they have the option of paying no tax or some tax or a lot of tax, what are they going to do? They're going to avoid paying tax. Labour set to close non-DOMB loopholes. So, that's front page of the Times. Then we've got the Daily Mail. Look at this. Record surge, they say, in £150,000 council fat tax. Uh, fat cats. A record number of town hall staff are pocketing more than £150,000 a year, according to a report. Despite households being hit by soaring council tax, at least 829 local authority employees were handed a staggering sum in pay, pensions and payoffs. Uh, the total for 2023 has risen by 108 staff in a year, the biggest rise on record. I do recognise that some of the top jobs require people who have a certain level of skills and ability and that you've got to pay them to do the job. I get it. But on the other hand, should we really be spending this sort of money when we've got this level of incompetence? But then, oh, the mirror. Well done, the mirror. We'll punish tax dodgers, says Labour. Shadow Chancellor Rachel Reeves is promising a crackdown on tax dodgers to fund the NHS. Hello, Angela. Hello. Hi, Angela. How are you doing? We'll punish tax dodgers. You couldn't make it up. 0344 499 1000. Help me out of this quagmire and mess. Even the Financial Times going with us. Labour Titan screw on non DOMs in the plan to fund key election pledges. Look, I'm well aware that we have a tax system that is both stupid and incompetent and sends mixed messages. Uh, and as far as I'm concerned, as somebody who lives and works in this country, the tax burden is too high. I do not want to see more tax. I'm sick and tired of it. Why? Because I don't think that you and I are getting value for money. And I'm sick and tired of all parties forgetting the most important thing when you're looking at a budget is to identify where you can make savings, particularly as we have the highest tax burden in 70 years. Asking you, me, us to pay more tax, coming up with ideological tax plans like, oh, let's put VAT on private school fees. What? It makes no sense because... Those people who cannot afford it will go back into the funded scheme that you and I pay for through our tax. It's going to cause chaos in some local schools. It will cause chaos uh, for those who can no longer afford it. And people should have, in my view, the choice as to where they send their children for their education. If you choose not to take the free service which is there, you're kind of giving money back anyway because you're not taking the funded service that you could take having funded it through your tax. It's absolutely insane. But I understand it ideologically. It just seems to me to be wrong. And it's not going to raise the money that they say it's going to raise. That's the biggest problem. In the same, same way that I think inheritance tax is a cruel tax. Why? You've already paid tax on the money that you earned. And then they're asking you to pay more when you're dead, when you can't vote. It's appalling. And then we have a tax system that's killing local businesses on the high street, encouraging big businesses to avoid paying their fair share. Why? Because they're located offshore. It's an absolute nonsense. And if the tax wasn't so high, you'd encourage people to come here to invest, to create jobs, to grow our economy. That's what we need to do. If you have a tax system that is punitive, then people will pay a larger percentage of nothing. Why? Because they're not here. They're not earning the money. 
Where is the focus on reducing the amount of waste? Often we'll talk about the NHS. Fine, it's in crisis and trouble. Sort out the GP service. Use Air &E for what it was meant for. I get all of that, but still, £300 million a year is thrown away because we misdiagnose drugs. 0344 499 1000 is the telephone number. Tell me how the government should raise more money. Right, I've had a rant. Now you join in the conversation. Richard is in Northampton. Richard, good morning. Good morning. Uh, good morning, Richard. So um, we, we've got these varying ranges of stories on the front pages, uh, ranging from tax crackdowns to closing loopholes to uh, fat cat people uh, earning 150000 plus a year at local authorities. What do you think the government should do to raise more money? Well, for the national health, I thought maybe they should do a spatial lottery where 75% of the money earned goes to the national health itself and 25% to the carers in the community, which is also in need of financial support. But what happens when you take that money away from the National Health Service? You don't take it away. Oh, I see. You're, you're thinking of doing a, a, a further... Oh, I see. Exactly. So you, you'd set up a new national lottery that its sole intention is to fund health services. That's right. Just the health service alone. OK. Would that raise enough money, though? It probably wouldn't raise tons, but it would begin to help, you know, what they already are putting in keep that but this would be additional and be able to possibly help the shortfall on the carers in the community and to help the nhs a little better okay and, i and i understand that and that might help i suppose but then what about the nhs which has had real terms funding increases so over and above inflation it's had on average three percent a year in real so terms <laughs> and and the thing is that it, it's not doing the job and, and arguably that's because we've got more people coming into the country. Do we need to p apply further restrictions? I mean, if we have a net inflow of 700,000 plus people into the country, surely we've got a problem when it comes to servicing all those people for the services that we've got to provide, the housing, the health, the hospitals, the uh, schools. We're not looking at the things that we could do that would make ourselves more economically viable. But what I understand is that there's... Um a quite a um, mess up in in the actual managers and stuff that they've got too many of those yeah of course they're seeing and if they could start cutting that that would say okay because you see my my view would be before you ask you me us for more money you should be looking to demonstrate to us the taxpayers that the money that we give government is being spent wisely there are too exactly. many civil servants there are too many non-jobs. There are too many situations where they squander and hose money. So, for example, we shouldn't be giving out things like paracetamol and aspirin and everything else uh, with National Health Service um, prescriptions on the basis that you can go and buy those from a supermarket for literally no money. Uh, it, it's so cheap to buy the generic drugs. I, I find it astonishing that we do that. But then also, <laughs> Richard, when it, when it comes to understanding... Uh, for example, waste, we have agency staff who are at huge cost filling in holes up and down the National Health Service. Why we don't have a National Health Service agency that is basically doing that job as opposed to a private company. I'm all up for private companies doing things where they genuinely help, but when they just charge more money and we could do it more effectively through exactly. a, um, a state-funded entity, I genuinely don't understand why we keep just getting the money standing on the top of a government building on a windy day, opening a suitcase and just hoofing it out into the streets. Exactly. Whoever takes over the health service um, brief in the government needs to look strictly at cutting the costs where uh, managers are involved and begin to invest that money into the care uh, of the patient. OK, well, it's going to be interesting to see uh, what we're treating, who is the Shadow Health Secretary. Should he get that job and should they be elected, uh, what he chooses to do? And I guess he'll have a bit more of a chance to hear what he has to say on Never Mind the Ballots, which, of course, is on this very station 
at uh, eight o'clock uh, tomorrow evening. So there'll be that uh, that that uh, that discussion uh, in really the Sun do newspaper. I do a lottery. I really do. Okay. Thank no, no, no. It's good. I, it's good idea, Richard. Thank you for that starter. Thank you. Which which newspaper would you like? Uh, mail. You'd like the mail. What uh, number would you like? A number between well. one one sixty eight twelve. You want? Okay. Let's mm -hmm. see what's on page twelve. Uh, oh, anger over calls to tear down the Foreign Office's elitist pictures. Rishi Sunak uh, led uh, last night led criticism of former diplomats and mandarins who have called for the elitist Foreign Office to be abolished. Number 10 rejected demands by the ex-civil servants for a major rebrand of the ministry, including a colonial era of pictures being taken off the walls of its grand headquarters. Oh, dear. <laughs> I know. I mean, I just take the view that this this is part of our history, and I genuinely don't understand why people are mucking around at the edges, getting fussed about pictures when we've got more important things to worry about. Richard, thank you for starting our conversation. So, Richard's idea: we have a national lottery. All the money goes into the health service. Good idea. Oh three four 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 nine nine one thousand is the telephone number. We've got three free lines into the building. Why don't you grab one of them? I want as many of you to have your say as possible. Why? Because this is the issue of our times. Do we raise more money through more tax or do we try and find savings? And either way, how should the government raise more money? That's my question. The telephone number 0344 499 1000. We take more of your calls next. Hey, very good morning to you. Thanks for joining us. You're with Talk TV on TV, on radio, online. And we're on your smart speaker. Now, you ain't going to have an eve it, me old Chinas, but a new report is calling for a new definition of cockney. All right, Jeremy, me old China. Rosie. Right, oi, oi, treat girl. When J.K. Rowling says, let's just be honest, that's all she's saying, let's just be honest, when a man goes out and kills, we should talk about them as what they are, a biological man. Trans woman, it's not a woman, trans woman. Is a man. Lee would have to go for much further than his statement. I mean, he, he did say that he spoke clumsily and he understood the Prime Minister's position, but I think he'd need to say that he'd got it wrong. Then I had a phone call this morning um, from Kim City Council, a lovely woman called Anna. And yeah, I've just received an email just saying um, that, yeah, I'm going to be getting a badge. Quite um, right, too. Yeah. Quite yeah. right, too. Yeah. It's that time again to get the violins out. That's right. Prince Harry has lost his bid for UK security after moaning he'd been singled out. They might as well be discussing an invasion of Daleks for all I really get this. <laughs> but, but, but I am now on social media having been dragged off my eight pound Nokia reluctantly kicking and screaming. <laughs> I'm a huge hit on Instagram as you probably know. What are you doing? I'm just about to do it. Ooh, Ooh. It's carry on <laughs> what just happened. <laughs> Whoa, <it's here. laughs> There was a suggestion by some that maybe it would be nice to put a statue of the Queen on the mm. fourth blimp. Mr. Khan apparently wasn't too keen on that. <laughs> I'm sorry. Huh? I, know it's, I know it's coming and I can't stop laughing. <laughs> so he suggested alternatives. There's a sweet potato. Uh, that's quite a small statue, then. Wasn't there also a prostitute? <laughs> ah, a trans... Sex worker. You don't really need one of those in Trafalgar Square. You've just got to walk up to Soho. So <laughs> yeah. Why do you know this? Because yeah. I know everything. Uh, was he just unlucky getting that question with an ice cream, or is it a sign of something more? Seemed like he was on a uh, late night show to attract a young demographic, and uh, they put him in an ice cream store. I read the statement this morning from the family. And if any police officer reads that statement, if you don't cry for what you read from what the family is saying, it's heartbreaking, then you shouldn't be a police officer. The UK, I'd say, has lots of racism within it. I don't necessarily think it's a racist country, but it permeates our institutions. Yeah, but for her to say, come out and vote, and by the way, when I was 22 years old and I had an affair with a married man that I knew was married, the feminist failed me. I'm sorry. I think like, the feminist we're, we're did fail her. Yeah, we're absolutely. supposed to have was moved on from that. Era. She was 22, mm. we're supposed to have moved on from that. Don't hark back on no. something you did that was wrong. Talk TV. It's the only place where you get the truth. Nineteen minutes past five.
Good morning. Me, James Manx, with you till six o'clock here on Talk. It's clear we need more money. Public services, fixing the NHS, all the other things that we keep talking about here on this station. But where should it come from? Labour want to close tax loopholes. OK, I understand. Yet with a record number of town hall staff, they're on six-figure salaries. It's, it's almost like they're myopic in their view that uh, we don't need to spend our money more, more wisely. Raise more tax, that's the answer. Spend more money, that'll solve the problems. No, it won't. Should we be looking for savings, though? How should the government raise more money? That's my question for you this morning. 0344 499 1000. Uh, Michael is in Birmingham. Michael, good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Michael. So, how should the government raise more money? Um, I'd like to see what they've got in America and Canada, which is some of them, uh, they have health, health insurance over in, in their countries. They've got family over there. Right. And are you, are you suggesting, then, that the NHS should no longer be free? No, I think it should be split, uh, health insurance and NHS, put together because I don't think the government have got the money. No, I think that's an interesting point. So do you think that the sacrificial um, almost altar at which uh, we, the Brits, you know, kneel in great praise of the NHS needs to perhaps change and that either we're going to have to pay for it differently or alternatively we've got to fund it differently? Yes, yeah. yeah. OK. Um, have you got experience recently of using the NHS or is it something you avoid? Oh, no, I've got plenty of experience, unfortunately. Oh, is it, is it OK? Does it work? Does it do its job? Well, if I was paying health insurance, I'd be saying you shouldn't be treating me like that. Um, um, and so, so uh, yeah, I'm sure, I'm sure people in Canada and America have their say because they're paying their health insurance, and that's what I would like to see, yeah. But what would you say to those who argue against those systems because they say, fine, if you've got the money, it's great, but if you don't have the money, uh, it leaves you almost without a proper health care service? Well, that's where some charities got to come in, in hand to help the people who, who... But then the great founding fathers and principles, if you like, of the NHS were to avoid that, to make sure that everybody, no matter who you were and of means, uh, you were able to receive uh, a level of health care, whoever you were and wherever you were in the country. Or do you think yeah. that's, that's his, for the history books? I just don't think... Um... Um, I, I believe, I mean, in, in Birmingham, we're having a new hospital being built. Um, it's not ready. Everything's falling apart at the other two hospitals. Um, people are missing os uh, important uh, uh, operations and procedures. Um, so, you know, that's where money from... But what about, OK, I, I understand, and, and of course we'd like to see new hospitals and, and better care and all that sort of business, but then what do you say about uh, the record surge in £150,000 council fat uh, cats, as they say? So we've got council staff where, you know, I've received a message here which, which says we'd be OK if MPs took a wage cut, which I think is a non-starter. I, I just think it's a, a stupid idea. Um, because I, I th arguably I think our MPs are not paid enough. But how can you have people who are working in town halls and working for local authorities and they're being paid more than our MPs? I don't, I don't know. I don't no? know. OK, all right, well, I throw it out there. Um, Michael, uh, would you like to pick a newspaper for me? Um, the Independent. Well, The Independent isn't a newspaper because uh, it's online only. Uh, do you want the I? I can give you the I. Yes, yes, yeah. All right, we'll okay. have the eye. Uh, a number between 1 and 56, please. Uh, 44. 44. Oh, you really are delving deep. I wonder what... Oh. Uh, oh. Uh, this isn't some business news. Uh, I'll give you... Oh. So, um, you know about the Edinburgh investment giant, um, which used to be called, I think it was Standard Life Aberdeen. You know what they renamed themselves to? OK, so they renamed themselves in what was argued as the uh, worst corporate rebrand in history, and it's in many of the papers today. Uh, they renamed themselves a few years ago to Aberdeen, except they took out all the vowels. So it's A-B-R-D-N, pronounced apparently 
Aberdeen. Um, Peter Branner, the chief investment officer, said that the £500 billion fund manager rebranded uh, its name from Standard Life Aberdeen to Aberdeen in April 2022. Uh, the change has been mocked by financial journalists and industry rivals, and uh, they faced, uh, they, they, they've uh, complained that they face corporate bullying because of their name. And it's terrible that they should uh, have to deal with the fact that people extract the Michael, Michael, uh, from their from their stupid name and rebrand. Yeah. Okay, you don't care, do you? Uh, no, I... no, you don't. No, it's fine, Michael. It's, it's okay. Michael doesn't care about that story. Uh, you picked it, but that's okay. Uh, Michael, thank you very much indeed for your call. I think it's quite funny that uh, Aberdeen uh, say that they face corporate bullying. You wouldn't face corporate bullying if you didn't have such a stupid name. And if you haven't spent all that money on trying to hide the fact that the investment returns hadn't been as good as they could have been. <laughs> Far bit from me to comment. Meanwhile, John Lewis has appointed um, a new chair. The John Lewis Partnership said that uh, former Tesco executive Jason Tarry will be their next chair. Following Dame Sharon White's decision to step down from the retailer, Mr Tarry, 33-year uh, retail veteran uh, at Tesco, uh, includes six as the UK and Ireland boss. He'll begin work in September. Um, what I also find quite amusing is that, um, and it was in one of the papers, um, Somebody has complained about the fact that um, there isn't enough female representation on the board of uh, John Lewis and they're complaining that uh, the boss isn't going to be a woman. Well, the current incumbent is female, so why shouldn't it flip? How on earth can you say that? I'll see if I can find that story because it's quite entertaining. Meanwhile, uh, Eric is in Norwich. Eric, good morning. Good morning, James. Hope you're well. Well, I, I am well, actually, thank you. Yeah, uh, despite the fact there's a lot of the Macs on the telly at the moment. I, well, um, I can sense your excitement. Are you going to be tuning in later for prime time at 7 o'clock? Um, I turned in last night and all I got was the eclipse. Yeah, well, that was quite interesting, wasn't it? That was good to see. Yeah, I do like that type of thing. Yeah, so it's quite... I mean, I have to say that um, what we were going to talk about got shuffled around a little bit because uh, the pictures were so astonishing and we thought, well, we must we must have some of those. Yeah, that's right, yeah, OK. Um, anyway, the um, these City Hall bosses, I think they uh, elect themselves... Uh, Wage, wage rises, and uh, that is ridiculous. They don't do the job. They can't do the job. And I think these people who uh, are there, like these solicitors, these, uh, these architects, they're the worst of all kind. They can't get a job in the private sector, and they all finish up in these city halls. And that's why we've got all these problems. They do seem to uh, get paid rather a lot of money for this. I mean, I don't understand why somebody who's uh, working uh, obscurely in a local authority can get paid more than an MP. That was ridiculous, I know, and I agree with that. Uh, MPs maybe should get a bit more money, um, but not cheat the uh, people, you know, with these uh, these uh, expenses things. Uh, that, that's uh, that's a bit annoying. Yeah, no, I think, uh, well, it is a bit annoying. So if you had to raise more money, what would you do? Well, what I would do, um, if, I, if I could, would be all these people who are on the dole, uh, on, on the sick, uh, because they go to the dogs and just say, oh, well, I've got depression and this sort of thing, I'm thinking of killing myself and this sort of thing, I would stop their money immediately and just give them... Uh, well, it's uh, not going to make their lives any better, is it? Well, uh, make it worse, because most of them have got jobs anyway. They, they, they uh, get the council tax, they get their rent paid, and they go to work. They work as window cleaners, work on the rules, work in the building. And uh, there's, there's, there's millions of them doing that. And I think that costs the country but some come up for 50 billion a year. So you would say uh, we've got to get people back to work and, and that will then raise some more tax? Well, it would do. They'd be paying tax. They're not paying any tax now. And they're a lot better off than, than uh, the, the people who go to work. A lot better off. They don't pay any tax. I mean, I do find it extraordinary that you can be better off on benefits than you are if you actually struggle and go and do some work. Exactly, and that, that is, I mean, I, I knew three people, uh, and, and they, well, I know these three people, uh, they go, they're in the pub every day, they all smoke and they drink and they go on holidays to Mallorca and these sort of places, Benidorm, and they're living better than the, the people next door who are struggling. Well, it's a bit of a mess, isn't it? It is a mess. Oh, dear. All right, um, pick a newspaper for me, Eric. Let's have that rag, the Daily Mirror, shall we? Here's the rag. Um, I, I love the fact that they're on the front page of the Daily Mirror, we'll punish tax dodgers. Uh, and I just want to sort of scroll across the front. Come on, find Angela. Anyway, um, uh, give me a number between 1 and 60, please. We'll have legs 11. It's hmm, a bit old-fashioned. I know. <laughs> I am old-fashioned. Oh, Eric. 
Oh! Changement de la garde. This is the story on the double page. Troops from both nations enjoyed a rendezvous in Paris and London yesterday to mark 120 years since the Entente Cordiale was signed. French soldiers took part in the changing of the guard ceremony at Buckingham Palace, whilst their UK counterparts did the same at the Elysee Palace. Crowds gathered to celebrate the furthering of friendly relations following the 1904 agreements. The Duke and Duchess of Edinburgh stood in for the King, uh, who is continuing his cancer treatment, and Queen Camilla. Edward and Sophie inspected 32 members of the 1st and 2nd Infantry Regiments of the Guard Republican and 40 guardsmen from the F Company Scots Guards at Buckingham Palace. Oh, goodness me, just we treasurers or should we? <laughs> oh, oh, oh. C'est un peu ennuyant for you. Oh, come see, come sir. OK, all right. There we go. Look at look at us with our franglais. Uh, Eric, thank you for your call. Um, 0344 499 1000 is the telephone number. Uh, how should the government raise more money? Oh, good, it's Ian in London. Hello, Ian. Good morning, James. How are you doing? Yeah, very good, thank you. So, tell me, how should the government raise more money? Um, well, we're talking about the government that's coming in or the one that's been there for 14 years. No, well, I think this is about... Um, so, Labour have said that they are um, set to close non-DOM loopholes. So, this is going further on the policy which uh, Jeremy Hunt stole from them, which I think is stupid and cack-handed, but anyway. So, Labour is proposing yeah. to mount an inheritance tax raid on wealthy non-DOMs under plans to pay for its commitments on schools and the NHS, which... Uh, do you accept that if you close loopholes, all you do with people with money is just basically give them an invitation to take their money elsewhere? No, I don't. That's, that's been used. They, they said that about the 80s and it didn't happen. Um, I think they should go after people that avoid tax and people that ripped off the um, uh, ripped off the, the system during the Covid crisis. Oh, so do you, what, what do you reckon then? Should, 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 they, should they go after Angela Rayner then? Oh, I love this. I heard you earlier on. Angela Rayner is living rent-free in your head, James, and in the head of so many of these right-wing commentators, and it's brilliant. I mean, I, 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 I love it. I love it, the fact that you've got Rachel Reeves promising to crack down on tax dodgers, uh, and then yeah. you have a, a, a classic situation of somebody who has avoided paying tax through either manoeuvring and moving deck chairs around or otherwise, and, and I just find yeah. it absolutely extraordinary. It's one rule for one and another rule for another. Well, you know, there's no actual evidence of this. And no, Angela no, of course said, not. No, no, no. Angela, no, no. Angela no evidence. Has said no, no. Yep. If, if, they, if the people yeah, yeah. produce the reports, yeah, yeah. then she'll do the same. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The report? Let's have the Russia report. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She said nothing wrong. No, 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 I understand. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, no, yeah, yeah. Oh, there you go. Yeah, yeah. I love it, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Winding you all up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But, um, yeah, they, 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 but do they you think, I mean, say, for example, um, I understand why Labour want to put VAT on school fees. I get it. Uh, I understand that they think that they're going to raise uh, some money from it. But do you not think that uh, a lot of the money that that may raise will end up being spent uh, on educational places for the people who are displaced from fee-paying schools? No, I don't think it will do that at all. Oh, OK. Why don't, why, don't, why don't the schools just lower their fees? Well, they won't, because they have to pay their wages. Well, they do, they, it's very expensive, it's very elitist. Lower their fees, there you go, sorted. They don't have to make as much money. So, so it's the classic <laughs> politics of envy, which is somebody can afford something and you don't think they should have it. They should put a tax on Grinder, where Tory MPs go and show their bits. They should possibly do that. That's a way of raising a few quid. What? Well, you know, Grinder, American company, they obviously charge to go on it, put a tax on that. Tax things from, from a board are, are the, to pay are the men in, tax. Are the men and women in white coats coming to get you today, Ian? You're talking absolute no, not. horse nonsense. Starbucks, Amazon, they should go after Amazon. They should go after all these people that didn't pay their way. They should go after Rishi Sunak's missus that, that started, got a COVID loan and then... Yeah, but, but Mrs. Mrs. Sunak's missus has said that she's going to pay all of her tax here in the UK, so that's dumb. No, no not that money that she took for, uh, from the Covid loan. Oh. No. 
And why is Rishi Sunak? There's another thing, £80,000 a day, apparently, to have that private jet and helicopter on standby. I don't think that Ange is going to be flying around in a private jet and Sakia. Oh, I, I think she think will. There's another side. Oh, I think she no, will. No, she won't. No, look at, look at Blair and Brown. They loved it. Well, Blair and Brown was 20-odd years ago. Oh, of course you know, it was. Yeah, yeah. But, and uh, Thatcher no, was 30 wait. years ago, and you still talk about her. Well, she did her anniversary yesterday, wasn't it? Yeah. We love the Thatch. If only, if only we'd listened to her. Not fondly remembered by me at all. No, no, I can sense. apart from that, I just wish that soon I could call this election, so instead of hypotheticals, we can actually get something done right. and get, it, get the country back on its knees. I just love the mirror front page. We'll punish tax dodgers. It makes me laugh. Uh, Ian, anyway, you spouted your drivel, so uh, which newspaper would you like? Can I have the Daily Star, please, James? Of course you can. <laughs> Here it is. Uh, a, a number between 1 and 48, please. Uh, number 7, please. Of course you want number 7. 7! There we go. There we go. Oh, no! What's that? Can I, um, Producer Philip, can I say the word penis? Oh, no, I just have. Penis sizes around the world, and you picked it, Ian. Penis sizes around the world have been revealed, and Brit blokes aren't measuring up. UK lads came in 68th place, the Global League <laughs> table of longest members. Brit guys are on uh, are working on average um, with a, a, um, a measurement of 5.2 inches of their member. Men from Ecuador apparently have an average of 6.93 inches. Um, they were officially the most well-endowed ahead of the Cameroon uh, guys with 6.56 inches and Bolivians with 6.5 inches. Yeah. The biggest Europeans really? are the Dutch. Very interesting. So you I can enjoy that, your um, sausage and beans this morning, Ian. Absolutely. I hear that Mr Rack's quite proud of his. He sends it to lots of people as well. OK, well, you managed to get that little story in there. Uh, uh, nobody cares. Uh, Ian, thank you. How do we raise more money? How should the government raise more money is the question. Ian thinks just more tax. <sighs> Forget the fact that there's any waste or anything. Kevin's in Basingstoke. Hello, Kevin. Morning. Uh, good morning, Kevin. So how should the government raise more money from tax? Well, the richest 1% in the country have uh, a quarter percent of the wealth. Right. So maybe we should go where the money is. And the average CEO earns... Um, 344 times the average worker's wage and the top CEOs earn more in three days than the average worker work earns in a year. I understand I understand that. Are you jealous? No, you, that wasn't the question, was it? The question was where should we... Tax yes, but the thing is that, from? OK, so if, if they're based here in the UK and they're being paid all that money, they're going to be paying income tax... The top rate of tax, 50%, they'll be paying that and they'll be paying national insurance and various other things. So uh, should are you saying that they should have to pay more than that? Well, yeah, of course I have. That's what I just said. Oh, OK. So so what are you going to do? Raise the tax rate? Well, raise it. Well, I mean, if you want to find some money, you have to go where the money okay. is. OK, no so if I'm really wealthy, Kevin, sofa, if I'm really I'm wealthy and I'm earning that amount of money... Um, yeah. There is a chance that in order to attract the best world talent, particularly for a global company, we're just going to move, like, for example, Shell have threatened to move their HQ from London to New York. Um, we could see that happening. So would you rather companies move their headquarters from yeah, the UK? Always, that's always the old excuse, isn't it? Well, it's you not, a, it's not an excuse, tax. Kevin. Don't, don't it will happen. It happened in the 70s. It, it will happen again. You said it. it this morning. Yes, exactly. And it's not, it's not an excuse, Kevin. It's reality. It's what happens. Oh, no, not always. I mean, Morgan Stanley have just um, just re-signed up Canary Wharf as well. Are you telling me that in. that Morgan Stanley and having worked there, I think I've got a little bit more experience, perhaps, than you, Kevin. Are you telling well, me that Morgan Stanley, if tax rates so went too high, so maybe you shouldn't put me down all the time? You would. My son, actually, that was my son's first job working for Morgan Stanley, so I do know a little bit. OK, fine. Um, but probably not enough, because if you, if you really understood how a place like that works, I guarantee that if the tax rates go up too high, they will move those operatives. They will not care about that office rent. It's a rented building. They will not care. They will move it to somewhere else. Those people will come to the UK office if they need to, and they will be based elsewhere, and you will get a bigger percentage of nothing. And that's the point. I'm all up, Kevin, for people paying their fair share of tax. But if you say to me that anybody should be paying more than 50% of what they earn in
intact. I think you're living in cloud cuckoo land. Nobody, I, I wouldn't want to go to work if I was having to pay, if I'm going to have to work harder and pay all that money into tax, I'm not going to bother, Kevin. Well, so you're telling me if you earn as much in three days as somebody else does in a whole year, if you had to pay a bit more tax, you think you just up and move somewhere else? When yep, you've got absolutely so I would. Money. Absolutely yeah, I would, go? Kevin. I mean, people, that, people that live here that are wealthy don't just live here because of the money. They live here for the, the lifestyle. They like living Yeah, and if they can't they use that money and if they don't have that lifestyle, guess what, Kevin? They're going to up sticks and leave. I would absolutely up sticks and leave. Should 45 or 50%, I think that by the time you've paid other taxes on top of that. So if your net effective tax rate is 60 or 70%, that means that six or seven pounds out of every single pound that you earn is going in tax. After a while, it becomes a disincentive incentive. So I totally understand and totally agree, by the way, that people should be paying tax and we should make sure that we get it. But if you disincentivize people, I mean, you've heard of the Laffer curve, I assume. So the yeah. Laffer curve is, is uh, something which develops, if you like. It's, it's the more you tax, the less money you receive in on the basis that incentives go and then people go. So you could tax all you like, but it's an ideological tax. And it's, it's the what politics of envy, Kevin. Can I just mention something before you cut me off? Do you know um, we've got a Brexit bonus uh, um, for once, charging VAT on education, because when we was in the EU, you couldn't do that. So, you know, we've got what we voted for. I, I think it's the most stupid, short-sighted tax uh, that they could come up with, purely That's ideologically not. driven, you know, driven you know, ultimately by the politics of envy, Kevin. No, fees for education have been going up rapidly over the last 20 years. And people wanting to go to private schools have increased. So just because you increase the fare doesn't mean you're going to not have people. The wealthiest are getting richer beyond belief. Of course they can afford to pay it. They earn as much in, in uh, three days as the rest of us do in a year. Yeah, but you're going to get a bigger percentage of nothing. If you charge too much tax, they're going to take their wealth elsewhere and you'll get none of it. That's exactly what well, happened. I don't in Monaco, where it's boring. I don't think so. Well, I think that there are plenty of places they could go. They go to the US. They go to um, different... Yeah, well, they possibly consider going to the crime, EU, crime Kevin. Rates, where there's serious crime rates. Not everybody... People do actually like living here. We have got more, more than just making billionaires richer... There is other things that people like about the UK. They yeah, so they'll come and visit in their private jets when they want to. Pardon? They'll come and visit when they want to in their private jets. Yeah, visiting is not the same as living, is it? Yeah, I, I guarantee, Kevin, you tax them too highly, they'll go. You'll get a bigger percentage of nothing. We're not well about done. Massively. When they're that wealthy, you can just tax them a little bit more. Oh, a little bit. They're already yeah, paying a little bit more. It won't it's a percentage. Difference. The more they earn, the more they pay. It's bonkers, well, Kevin. It makes know, no the sense. Thing is, the thing is that the richest 300 people on the planet have got more wealth than the poorest 3 billion. Yeah, and, and how many of them are based going. here in the UK, the Kevin? How many of them are based in the UK? Too much wealth in very few people's hands. Fine, but what are you going to do? Impose a, well, a, well, uh, a world police... Well, countries could come together and say we should tax more. Yeah, of course they should. Good luck. That's what happens when people, when okay. people come No, no, no. I, I, if that were to happen, then I understand. If, you're, if you get rid of the tax havens, I, I totally understand, and, and that might be a move. Uh, Kevin, pick a newspaper for me. Um, Daily Mail. The Daily Mail. Oh. Put your gloves on. No, no, the, I don't have gloves for the Daily Mail. Um, pick a number between 1 and 68, please. Um, 27. Oh, all right. Let's see what's on page 27 of the mail. Probably be some scurrilous gossip. Um, what about Prince Andrew? No. Oh, this is about Jeremy Clarkson. Oh God. No, just Jeremy. Did you hear what he said about what he, what he said about um, on? Uh... No, no, no. I want to hear this story. So. Uh, he has helped transform the views of agriculture with his hit television show, Clarkson's Farm. Now, could Jeremy Clarkson be about to do the same for the beleaguered pub trade? I ask because the petrol head is said to be involved in negotiations to buy a tavern in the Cotswolds. The former Top Gear presenter is understood to be interested in snapping up the coach and horses in in Burston on the water. Uh, a picture postcard village in Gloucestershire. The 18th century Grade 2 listed building is a stone's throw away from the Hawkstone Brewery where the beer is produced from um, Clarkson's Diddley Squat Farm in Oxfordshire. Yeah, well, um, did you watch that show? I did because he's... I like the bit where he said, what are farmers going to do when all the subsidies are going to be cut? He said they're going to be in dire trouble. Yes. And they'll be protesting outside London. Oh. He was right, wasn't he?
Oh. Well, that's uh, this government's stupid fault for not dealing with Brexit properly. Kevin, thank you. There we go. We've had a good old Barney. If you want to get involved in the conversation, please do. I'm asking, how should the government raise more money? 0344 499 1000. There's one free line into the building. Why don't you grab it and we'll take more calls next. Hey, very good morning to you. Thanks for joining us. You're with Talk TV on TV, on radio, online. And you're on your smart speaking. Now, you ain't Talk. gonna happen and eve it, me old Chinas, but a new report is calling for a new definition of cockney. All right, Jeremy, me old China. Rosie. All right, oi, oi, treat, go. When JK Rowling says, let's just be honest, it's all she's saying, let's just be honest. When a man goes out and kills, we should talk about them as what they are, a biological man. Trans woman, it's not a woman, trans woman. Is a man. Lee would have to go for much further than his statement. I mean, he, he did say that he spoke clumsily and he understood the Prime Minister's position, but I think he'd need to say that he'd got it wrong. And I had a phone call this morning um, from Kim City Council, a lovely woman called Anna. And yeah, I've just received an email just saying um, that, yeah, I'm going to be getting a badge. Quite um, right, too. Yay. Quite Yay. right, too. It's that time again to get the violins out. That's right. Prince Harry has lost his bid for UK security after moaning he'd been singled out. You might as well be discussing an invasion of Daleks for all I really get. This. <laughs> but 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 I am now on social media having been dragged off my eight-pound Nokia reluctantly kicking and screaming. <laughs> I'm, I'm a huge hit on Instagram, as you probably know. What are you doing? I was just about to do it. Ooh, Ooh. It's carry on. <laughs> what just happened? <laughs> Whoa, <Where is> it? <laughs> There was a suggestion by some that maybe it would be nice to put a statue of the Queen on the mm. fourth plinth. Mr. Khan apparently wasn't too keen on that. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, I, know what's, I know what's coming and I can't stop laughing. <laughs> so he suggested alternatives. There's a sweet potato. Uh, that's quite a small statue, then. <laughs> wasn't there also a prostitute? <laughs> that, that oh, a, a trans sex worker. You don't really need one of those in Trafalgar Square. You've just got to walk up to Soho. So anyway, <laughs> just, 40 yeah. minutes, 40. Why do you know this? Because yeah. I know everything. Uh, was he just unlucky getting that question with an ice cream or is it a sign of something more? Seemed like he was on a uh, late night show to attract a young demographic and uh, they put him in an ice cream store. I read the statement this morning from the family. And if any police officer reads that statement, if you don't cry for what you read from what the family is saying, it's heartbreaking, then you shouldn't be a police officer. The UK, I'd say, has lots of racism within it. I don't necessarily think it's a racist country, but it permeates our institutions. Yeah, but for her to say, come out and vote, and by the way, t when I was 22 years old and I had an affair with a married man that I knew was married, the feminist failed me. I'm sorry. I think like, the feminist what, what did fail her. We're supposed to, supposed to was have another moved on from era. That. She was 22, mm. we're supposed to have moved on from that. Don't hark back on no. something you did that was wrong. Talk TV. It's the only place where you get the truth. Five forty-seven is the time. It's me, James Max, with you until six o'clock here on Talk, where I'm talking to you about money. Should we be looking for savings in government? Should we be looking for higher taxes? Should we be uh, going through? Um, I don't know, charging people for uh, living in this country, putting up council tax. What? How should the government raise more money? Is the question. Uh, let's go to Robert, who's in Scotland. Uh, Robert, good morning. Um, good morning, James. Uh, good morning, Robert. So, tell me, how should the government raise more money? Well, do you know, I, I, um, there's so many ways that the government can actually um, get more money for everything, but um, we don't have the proper government. Oh. So, uh, what are we doing? Okay, so um, what's the answer to that? Because Labour is saying uh, that they're going to um, they're going to uh, target non-DOMs, they're going to uh, increase various tax rates, they're going to uh, change uh, all sorts of things. I mean, is that the way to deal with it? Well, yeah, um, let's explain something um, clearly. Um, between the two go the two governments that's sitting there, I don't think they have any idea what they're doing. And I think the... the I think British a lot of public, people would agree with you. I think the British public have just lost um, everything about the um, government. It's like, no, they were, the government is the one 
people in this society is supposed to help us. And the government has just failed us completely. OK, so should they be raising more tax or do you think that they should be wasting less money? Well, I think, um, well, obviously we have to raise more tax. Why? Well, otherwise, um, how are we going to sort things out? OK, um, so uh, do you think that we should have people who work in local authorities, record surge in £150,000 council fat ta cats, do you think we should have people um, in local authorities earning more than MPs? Absolutely not. Right, I think so, people, so uh, isn't I think that an indication people... that instead of raising more tax, what we should actually be doing is spending the money that they receive more wisely? So, for example, we've put 3% in real terms, so that's above inflation, every single year into the NHS, and still it's an absolute basket case. So, surely, uh, if that's the case, then we need to be looking at how that money is spent. Absolutely. Um, but so, why are governments, no, why, no, why are politicians no, not doing I mean, that? Yeah, excuse me. Excuse me, can I actually speak? Go on then. When the things um, when things are not organised, and only thing is in local um, government and and in local places, it's just like America. You have, you have a state here, a state here, a state here, and everybody has their own conclusion what to do and how to run their um, councils. They do not councils. Um, they're paying their monies in different ways, and but they're not. There's no one there to control anything what they're doing. Well, you say there's no one there, but there are people there. They've, we've got more people working in the civil service than ever before. Uh, we've got uh, more tax inspectors than we've ever had. Uh, we've got more computer systems. We've got the highest tax burden in 70 years. This argument that we've just got to raise tax and all this sort of business, it just doesn't wash for me. Well, you know, it doesn't wash for me either. The only thing is, stop taking... Stop taking immigrants into the country. OK. I mean, that, that's a good piece of red meat to throw there. I mean, there is an argument to say that with 700,000 uh, net uh, immigration no, into you, the country... No, no, excuse me. No, 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 you answer this question. How many million illegal immigrants are here? I don't know about the number of illegal immigrants. Is it a million? Is it two million, possibly? Quite. And the only thing is, so, and then the NHS, don't you think that's going to struggle the NHS? Of course. So why aren't we doing I, anything about it? Well, because I, I think that, well, legal migration, which is one thing, I think we've encouraged too many people to come here to use our university and other systems, and we've funded uh, through... Oh, are uh, you kidding me? And now, and, you know, honestly, now you sound like a politician. No, I think that's part of it. And then the illegal immigration, I think it's absolutely extraordinary that we spend all the money on a Rwanda plan that isn't going to work. Uh, we've got thousands of people turning up in small boats which shouldn't be allowed. Uh, we're spending millions of pounds a day on keeping those people housed in hotels and, they, and, and frankly, it, it's not money that and you and I should be paying for. You know what, honestly, I've lived all over the world and let me tell you something right now. When people come here, they come here for a reason. Now, the whole of Africa... It's a massive continent. Are you kidding me? One of the biggest continent in the world. So the thing is, if you don't like that country, why don't you go to the other country? Or well, the other country? I, I, I agree. And I think there are lots of reasons why people come here. And I think we've got historical reasons that we've allowed people to come from co Commonwealth countries and too many uh, corrected, uh, connected countries. Oh, but... And, and it's, just, it's just uh, driven a huge problem, Robert. And maybe we can agree on that. Now, we must move on, uh, if only because uh, we need to sort out your personal finances. Myron Jobson is Senior Personal Finance Analyst at Interactive Investor. Joins me now. Myron, good morning to you. Good morning to you, James. So, um, a litany of incompetence, God knows how many housing ministers or otherwise, uh, and indeed more people arriving on our shores. Arguably, that explains why renters are set for a what percent increase in their rent over the next three years? 13%. Um, and this is according to um, finance by Think Tank, the Resolution Foundation. And the main reason they've given for this is an expected rise in earnings. So that's what they said, um, that rise in earnings means more people have money, I suppose, to spend on housing. In theory, obviously, in reality, that doesn't necessarily work out to be the case. And also, they said that there's been a somewhat COVID 
backlog because during the COVID, uh, well, during the pandemic, there was a halt in repossessions um, and evictions, um, and this help keep the price of rent low and since then there's been a picking of those rules and as such rents have increased um, and there's one more thing and um, that's set to drive this increase in rent and that's more families are renting um, rather than buying why because house prices are simply too but well, it's just untenable for many families so more families are renting and they're renting for longer and that and that's why and with the supply of rental properties not necessarily increasing by the same pace um rent prices have gone up and are expected to go up in the near future too um there's little discussion as to uh, the reasons why. I mean, I, I guess government doesn't necessarily want to blame itself or mark its own homework, but uh, the reason that rent is rising is partly because of the stupid rules uh, and taxes yep. that have been put in place. Anyway, let's talk about um, if you are a homeowner, uh, or alternatively you are trying to get a mortgage, uh, fixed mortgage rates, what are your options? Yeah, so right, the options have increased, um, which is good. There's been like massive instability in, in the mortgage marketplace. Lenders have been putting new options out there, then like redrawing them um, within days, simply because of j just just how the mortgage market um, fixed rate mortgages are priced. Swap rates um, is what they use um, to price um, mortgages, and that's been all over the place um, in, in recent history. Um, but that's somewhat subsiding as such mortgage um, options have increased, but mortgage rates have increased also very modestly though over the past month. So I'll give you an example. The average two year fixed rate deal um, is priced at around 5.8% um, and this is up from 5.76% um, um, at the right. start of March. Okay, well then we've got options there. Uh, in a word, uh, what is our cheapest supermarket option? Aldi, um, and this is according to Consumer Champion, which so the average price of like the typical grocery shop um, is around um, £121 in Aldi, um, which beats Lidl in second place just slightly, um, which it comes up as £122 for Lidl. There we go. It's all about the Aldi if you want to save some pounds. Myron Jobson, personal finance analyst from uh, Interactive Investor. Thank you very much indeed for joining us here on Talk. It's much appreciated. Meanwhile, I'll leave you uh, with news that in Chechnya, they have banned all songs that are faster than 116 beats per minute over fears that Western and rave and techno music pollute the Russian Republic. Oh, well, no more banging dance tunes over there. Uh, I, however, will be back, probably banging the tables or something, at 7 o'clock for prime time and tomorrow morning for early breakfast. Meanwhile, next here on Talk, it's Talk Today with Nicola Thorpe and Peter Cardwell. Very good morning, it's just gone six o'clock. I'm Jeremy Kyle. And I'm Nicola Thorpe. Welcome to Talk Today. Hey, very good morning to you. Thanks for joining us. You're with Talk TV on TV, on radio, online. And we're on your smart speaker. Now, you ain't going to happen and eve it, me old Chinas, but a new report is calling for a new definition of cockney. All right, Jeremy, me old China. All Rosie. right, oi, oi, treat, go. When J.K. Rowling says, let's just be honest, that's all she's saying, let's just be honest, when a man goes out and kills, we should talk about them as what they are, a biological man. Trans woman is not a woman, trans woman is a man. Lee would have to go for much further than his statement. I mean, he did say that he spoke clumsily and he understood the Prime Minister's position, but I think he'd need to say that he'd got it wrong. And I had a phone call this morning um, from Kingston City Council, a lovely woman called Anna. And yeah, I've just received an email just saying um, that, yeah, I'm going to be getting a badge. Quite um, right too. Yay. Quite Yay. right too. It's that time again to get the violins out. That's right. Prince Harry has lost his bid for UK security.